Hello everyone, uh, this is Ian from Powerhouse Miniatures, uh, just back today with Korgorath from the Age of Sigmar starter box. Now I painted this one for the Evia Metal first anniversary painting competition. Uh, it's already ended by the time I'm taking this video, I think it's the 22nd or 21st of, of August. Um, the results are I didn't win or get any mentions or anything but a lot of fun to paint. Always really cool to try and push it on one or two models um, to like the highest level you can or you know to spend a long time. My sort of personal thing is getting tabletop stuff done relatively quickly. So for me, it's actually kind of difficult to get the time or the, um, the I don't have too many commissions that are just like one-off high-level stuff. And I'd love that, obviously. But a lot of mine is uh, sort of army painting or, um, yeah, just like tabletop stuff, like good quality stuff, but with uh, a slightly stricter deadline. So these ones, really cool, like when the competition season comes around, like I go to Salute and Golden Demon, and those are really cool, um, because you get to spend, you know, trying to push your skills, trying to like take in the stuff you've learned. Because I think as, I mean, I've been a commission painter for sort of uh, four years now, and over that time, you, you just you pick stuff up. I think when you dedicate yourself to any sort of craft, um, you look for sources of inspiration and motivation all around you. And some little things that I didn't consciously realise that I'd learnt or picked up um, I kind of had so yeah it was really cool um, now this is the, the Korgorath miniature from Age of Sigmar I don't know how I feel about Age of Sigmar if I'm brutally honest I'm not quite sure the models themselves are really cool um, it's just too similar to 40k and I think that the Age the Sigmarites whatever they call the Sigmarines basically are far too similar to either um, Custodies or Space Marine Terminators and I've known of quite a few people, um, or people that have inquired about commissions, or people that I've seen online, using um, the, I forget the name of the actual the Sigmarites that you get in the box, but using them for Space Marine Terminators, or converting them, or or doing whatever. So for that, that's really cool, and, and like I said, the, the models are awesome, but I'm just not a fan, really, of the game, or the rules, or the, they're basically getting rid of Warhammer Fantasy. Because it didn't appear to need to be reformed like that. I mean, I, I don't know. It could have just been released as a standalone skirmish game. Games Workshop, I've obviously moved away from that in previous years. Um, I and mean, when I first started playing the game, sort of, I don't know, 15 years ago maybe, there was Necromunda, Blood Bowl, um, Battlefleet Gothic, you know, Mordheim. There was a, several smaller games that were all supported by Games Workshop. And I know now Games Workshop have a lot to do with fantasy flight games and they have board games and separate things. It's not um, it's not just um, 40k and Age of Sigmar or the Lord of the Rings ranges and things, but it seemed to me that they didn't need to to scrap the rule set of Warhammer Fantasy and especially 8th edition, which was still popular, had been around for you know it's 30 years. And I know they're carrying the fluff on and, and everything and then uh, changing the names is to do with all the legal battles they're getting into putting themselves into and all this but before I don't know whatever so the miniatures are cool um, I really like them for the aesthetic purpose always designed really well and um, yeah like I said really cool to push your skills for a painting competition like the Evia Metal one there was so many entries so many people loads of people doing like really cool like one-off stuff the winners were fantastic really cool like some insane ones so you can check that out um, it's Evia Metal like heavier without the H, obviously I've got a, a northern accent so I don't pronounce H's very often anyway, but yeah, heavier metal and um, just have a look through the, the competition um, photo because there's loads of categories, loads and loads of entries, all of them amazing, the winners in particular, really well done. So this one was my uh, my entry, Korgorath, um, I'm really pleased with it, but I used non-metallic metal on the on the hands, so I'm going to twist that around a little bit so you can see that. Um. So my basic thing is just to follow... I use the Games Workshop paints very often. Um, so it'd be Morton Fang Brown, XV88, Balor Brown, Baylor Brown, um, Ushabti Bone, and then a white edge highlight around the edges. And then back in the centre, uh, the, the shadow, sorry, I've used purple, uh, Zerius purple, I think it is. And then on the very, very edge is just a white highlight for little reflective spots and things. Uh, the other arm is the same. I'll just sort of twist that around so you can see it. Um, it looks really cool. And from a distance, you can't... I mean, you can tell that it's non-metallic metal, but not... Like, it's kind of on the on the um, the loin. 
is a NNM as well. So you can sort of tell, but obviously the, the idea is that you'd um, it'd look realistic like metal. And sometimes if you do it well enough, people don't realise. I suppose that's one of those little backwards sort of things where, you know, if you if you do it well enough, you can't tell you've done it. So what's the point in doing it? So, sort of, you know, it's like one of them. So it's pretty cool. Um, around the back, I spent a long time sort of blending in reds. So just there. I hope that's coming through properly on the camera. Again, there's pictures of this on my Facebook uh, page, which is facebook.com forward slash powerhouse miniatures. My name's Ian Powell, which is on there. Again, I've, um, I don't have a like page or such. It was just a, um, like a personal profile that I've just had for years and years now. And, you know, I've just, uh, it's become my sort of online portfolio. Now, the red again, same as always. I, I pretend that there's uh, a light source that sort are of coming from directly from the, the over the top. Uh, sort of like a 45 degree angle or almost totally over the top and then I paint on a little bit of the highlight from there like uh, this one's Evil Sun's Scarlet from Games Workshop and then I've uh, shaded that down and sort of blended it all through once I've got the the highlights on and a rough um, a rough idea of where I was going to put the highlights basically aided by a little torch that I use uh, then just sort of blended them together the, um, it's purple in the uh, recesses and then in between for the transition very thin glazed layers of um, it's Warlord Warlord purple, a Warlord pink, I think, from uh, Vallejo Game Air, which is like a, a really rich pink colour um, to blend the two colours together. And then on the legs and then on the shoulders, I've faded in um, Cantor blue, like a dark blue, which again complements like the red and the purple and all of that. So it's like a, a cohesive thing. Uh, the legs I've just picked out... Uh, a highlight with uh, I think it's Fenrisian blue. Now the base was really simple. Um, I mean, really, really simple. I just painted it corn red and then did blood for the blood god special effect on the top. So it just looks like he sort of stood on like a little little pool of blood. But yeah, really simple. I'd like to see a corn army maybe painted like that because it was it took no time, which is great. But it also looked really cool. In my well, in my opinion at least. <laughs> so the face I just did like a glowing. Uh, yellow effect it's pretty cool and then all the bone stuff I did um, as opposed to highlighting like a lighter colour I went through everything like highlighting it slightly darker I've seen that from Games Workshop quite a lot from the studio uh, painters and stuff but they're doing that doing that quite often so yeah just, just a bit of that round the head and some some of the on the um, the skulls at the back so yeah it was a lot of fun um, and again always really always really fun to try and push it on a few of them Anybody that paints, I'd say, even if you're doing armies or your own army, or if you do commissions or anything like that, I'm no authority really at all. Um, but yeah, it's good. It's always good to push your skills in as many different ways and as many areas as you can. And like I said, I've got stuck a little bit doing, not stuck in the negative way, of course, because I love it, but um, doing armies and bigger commissions and things, just trying to get things done fast using the airbrush and stuff. So every once in a while, really good to push it. Really looking forward to Golden Demon. Um in a few months time and a few of the smaller events I'll be at as well but as always you can catch pictures on facebook.com forward slash powerhouse miniatures and then my website which is powerhouse miniatures.co.uk you can find me on there so yeah cheers for watching